Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkowiak. Today we're going to talk about why traditional bow hunting for whitetails is different than any other modern weapon you would use. And it's a whole different element, whole different world. And we're going to break it down and explain why. What you can expect to have happen when you grab hold of a longbow, a recurve, or a traditional bow and you try and head out into the woods. Because uh, again, the differences are huge. So basically, in a nutshell here... The first one I'm going to talk about on this is how we you, you have to shrink your world, but you also have to expand your thinking. Your methods of doing things before don't work anymore. Your distances that you can shoot are no longer applicable. Uh, all the variables that come into play have to be really understood on a much bigger level. You have to pay attention to things in more detail. Um, when I say shrink your world... Understand it as a traditional bow hunter, 20 yards is about our max. Now, I know there's some people that may shoot farther. Uh, there may, you know, there may be times that you end up shooting at 22, 23 yards, something like that. But realistically, 12 yards is kind of what we're looking for. 12 yards is our, our average. 12 yards is what we want to be. Because if you go 7 yards further, you're at 19. That gives you a good zone. You go 7 yards under that, under that 12, and you're at uh, you're about 5 yards. And that is also pretty much your bare minimum. If you're in a tree stand, 5 yards is as close as you can have them, uh, depending on your height, and still be able to make a good shot. So that 5 yards to 19 yards is kind of your zone. But it's about 12 yards is average. Um, and over the 100 deer, I've you know, I've killed over 100 deer, and I I've, can count on one hand how many I've killed beyond 20 yards. Okay, and if I did, it was 22, 23. I think I've killed, farthest I've ever killed an animal at all has been 26 yards. So just keep that in mind. Um, that with traditional bow hunting, everything is shrinking in your world. The days of being able to look at a 100-yard wide funnel and think you're going to be able to cover that by sitting in the middle and shooting 50 yards each way with your compound or your reeker, or I mean with your crossbow or something like that, those days are gone. You have to take that 100-yard wide funnel and narrow it down even smaller. In order to do that, you're going to have to expand your thinking. You're going to have to go beyond going, this is just a funnel. As an example, you're going to have to look at it and go, this is a funnel, but where are they going to be traveling to to eat? Where are they coming from? What direction should they travel? Because I can't have just a crosswind. That won't work. I need to have a wind that's coming in me or coming in at a certain degree angle so that I can actually take advantage of having 40 yards of that covered and be in the right 40 yards. Or I have to find a down tree or something that is going to shrink my world up that's going to funnel that deer movement by me somehow and narrow that down. So when I say shrink your world, I mean you have to bring it down on a very microscopic level here. This is not going to work the way you think it did. All of the stuff that you know about hunting may be a good foundation to get you in line and get you in the right direction, but it will not work for you. Okay, traditional bow hunting for whitetails is different. You have to take this next level um, and really shrink your world up and expand the way you think about it. That's why the how and why become so important. But before I get into that, to give you an example of shrinking your world, I'm insetting somewhere in here about right now. I'm putting in a couple of images to show you so you can see reality-wise. I'm showing you a, a target that I have set up. I, I purposely set this tree up. From that tree, I put my deer, my 3D deer target at 15 yards, and then I have my bag target set 12 yards away. So you can kind of see in reality what this is. And I also, since that 12 yard is our average that we're looking for, what I mean by that is when you start thinking of how you want to set up, you want to try to be about 12 yards from the tree that you're looking for. Give or take a yard or two either way, but you're looking for something to be about 12 yards for your shot option. Again, you can expand out a little bit from there, but that 12 yards is average. So I've also included some things to put it into perspective of what 12 yards really is here for. You're going to see a picture right in here of my garage, which is actually 13 yards. Uh, you're going to see an example of my camper, which is exactly 12 yards, actually 35.4 feet. So a couple inches short of, you know, it's, it's literally just a couple inches yards or inches short of 12 yards, but basically 12 yards. Uh, you're going to see an example here of my truck and my trailer, which is 19 yards. That shows you, I mean, a truck and a trailer. I'll think about that next time you see one of these go down the road. That's your whole world. That's all you can shoot. It's the only thing that matters to you. If it's outside that circle of a truck and a, tr and a camper trailer, it's not relevant. If you can't set up and be within that range of it, it's no good. Let that sink in for a little bit because that's a huge difference from modern technology today. Now, even with the modern stuff, yes, I know, I mean, 
the, the tides were much, or the, the tables were a lot closer. The scales were much more even. You go back 20 years ago when people with compound bows were shooting 20 yards, 25 yards. With the technology today, there's a lot of people shooting a lot longer distances than that. Uh, whitetails, I don't think that should ever happen. I don't think with whitetails, because of how jumpy they are in a string, I don't think a compound or a crossbow should ever make a shot beyond 35 yards at a deer. I don't care how accurate they are. Uh, at a white-tailed deer. Um, and I, like I said, after all the deer and all the years of this I've seen, I'm telling you that the, the margin for error on that is huge because of the string jumping capability and the movement factor. And technology today will not let bows go fast enough to beat that 35-yard range. Even with these crossbows at 400 feet a second, 35 yards is a long time for that arrow to get there. So, but us as traditional bow hunters, with our much slower moving equipment, our arrows going much slower, and all the other variables that come into play in this, which I will break into for you with some of the stuff. But when you take into account all of that, you take into the fact that we don't have quite the pinpoint accuracy at distance uh, like those weapons do. I'm not saying that they're not accurate in close. Um, I'm saying at distance. Um, and all, the, all these things come together. 20 yards is about where you're going to want to max out at. And if you think you can do better because you shoot better on the range and you can be at the range and you can make targets while you're standing on the ground at a hay bale or a target out there at 30 or 30 yards with your, with your longbow or with your recurve and you think you're going to be able to duplicate that in the woods on a live animal from a tree stand under pressure, I promise you you're sadly mistaking yourself. And then even if you were to pull it off, the fact that he can jump your string, move before your arrow gets there and all the variables that come into it, make it worth 20 yards is your whole world, in my opinion. Anything outside of that, beyond that, again, if you're off by a couple of yards judging distance-wise, I, I get it, but uh, you start taking shots beyond 25 yards, in my opinion, you're, un uh, you're unethical. As a traditional bow hunter, there's nothing ethical about being a traditional bow hunter and shooting at a white-tailed deer beyond 20 yards. Okay, or 23 or whatever it happens to be, but don't push that envelope. I'm telling you, I don't care how good you think you are on a range. I've seen it time and time again. 25 years I've been doing this. I've seen so many people that, oh, I'm so good at this distance. Oh, I can, I can put, you know, five out of five in a pie plate at 50 yards. I, I don't care. And then they go in the woods and then they call me that night because they took a 30 yard shot at a deer and ended up sticking it right in the rear end. And now I'm out there all night long in the rain helping them find it. And we never do. Okay, I'm telling you, don't play those games. Be ethical, 20 yards inside. You've just seen some examples to show you reality of what that really is. Um, the how and why becomes the everything factor to this. Again, everything has to be shrunk down for a traditional bow hunter to be successful. So you really got to pay attention to what the deer are doing, why they're doing it, how they're going to do it, and how you're going to attack that and ambush them how that setup's going to be, why it's going to work on what day and what wind condition, all of these things become a factor. But no longer can you just walk in the woods and have this huge margin of error that's available because of the distances you can shoot. Um, or because of uh, your scent controller, because you're far enough away and high enough in a tree that your wind's not going to bother you or may not bother that deer and it might get by. Doesn't get, you can't get away with this stuff. Not in a traditional bow hunting world. There's too many variables that come into play. So when you're out there, you start thinking about the how and why. It becomes very important. I've many times had my... I, I'm a mobile hunter. I, can, I hunt with my sticks in my stand on my back every single sit. I climb up the tree. I hunt. I pull everything down. I climb out and I go to a new spot. So being that type of a hunter... I've had my stand and my sticks on my back, walked into an area that I've never been at before, and I have stood down there looking at going, that tree, that tree, or that tree, and I stood there for 35, 40 minutes trying to decide what tree I want to go in because I'm figuring out the how and the why and analyzing every scenario and every situation, every option, everything to see what's going to give me the most maximum results that I can get and maximize my opportunities that are there. If you're not doing that, you're, you're not... You're not going to make it. This is important. You have to. Again, you don't have the luxury of distance. You don't have the luxury of being. And that distance brings more than shot opportunity or shot opportunities at distance. 
It brings control of the wind, control of visibility, being busted in a tree, so many different things, okay? Even with the, with the busted factor up there, with a compound, you can see a deer at 50 yards, draw that thing back, however, whatever you guys do, what do they, they bring it back and lock it in, or heaven forbid, a crossbow, and you rest it on your thing and you look through the scope, but you guys can have that held back like this, and you can sit here for five minutes if you want, waiting for that deer, waiting for that deer. And then when that deer is in at 15 yards, if he comes in that far and he's 15 yards away, all your movement is, boom, that's your movement. Click, done. As a traditional bow hunter, that deer is coming in, you're holding your bow, you're right here, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, watching him, he gets here. You have to draw that bow, come into anchor, get set, and then shoot that bow. There's so much more movement involved in that. And all of that movement has to happen right in that tight proximity, in that very shrunken down world. So the how and why become everything to the setups. You will learn that. Whether you want to or not, you will be forced uh, to learn that. Your tree stand tactics and setups are going to change. Again, you are in a very shrunken down world and you are expecting deer to be right on top of you. Okay, and when deer, when you're right in there with them like that, where you can hear them breathing, and this is a whole different ball game. So your tree stand tactics and setups, like I said, they're gonna change because of the fact that you can no longer go very high in the tree. Why? Because of a couple reasons. Main one is uh, because of the fact that you have to deal with shot angles. And you have to deal with the fact that you don't have pinpoint accuracy. Now, can we kill deer with traditional bulls all day long with our accuracy? We get Yes, we can, as long as we stay ethical and keep ourselves inside of our margins here. But pinpoint accuracy to be able to be 20 feet up in a tree and make an 8-yard shot on a deer, to have the pinpoint accuracy to be able to thread that arrow through a 1 or 2 inch window. That's what you have, a 1 or 2 inch window. You take a 9 inch kill zone and you shrink it up to about two inches, one and a half to two inches in height because of the fact that you have that extreme angle. So in order to get the lung on this side and the lung on this side, your angle is so high that you have to clip the top of the first lung and the bottom of the second lung with a very short window. And that's because of our, our short, close ranges. Now, if you're 20 feet up and you're used to shooting a deer at 30 yards, cakewalk, easy, okay? You that distance because now that changes. As a matter of fact, I'm going to roll in a, a clip right here that's going to show you that. It's going to show you that shot trajectory angle right here. You're going to see it, and it's going to be a uh, 15 yard setup. I'm not even going out to 20. We're going to do it right here, 15. So I did it. I did it at 15 yards to show you that shot angle distance. There, the difference in trajectory of that arrow between 15 feet up and 20 feet up at platform height. And then I even kind of cheated because I only put like a five foot guy on there because I wanted this to match. But you're looking at this. So here is a 15 yard setup. Ideal. Probably the closest I would want them if I was 20 feet up in a tree because again, that margin of error is getting very small. That window of opportunity is getting very small for double lungs. But you see that at 15, you know, if you're 15 feet up, it really does open up. So instead of being this big of a margin, you now have that big of a margin. That's a lot better. When you start getting in closer to um, eight yards, that margin shrinks. When you start getting into five yards, that margin really shrinks. When you get out to 20, it gets bigger. It's all relative to the trajectory of that actual arrow because of the height you're at. So you are going to have to change your tree stand tactics. You are going to have to change your setups. Uh, and then and the other issue is if you're not going to go up that high, you've got to pay attention to better cover. So for me, basically, I mean, I can go anywhere from <clears throat> with my three sticks and an eighter that I carry in my lone wolf stand, I can go as low as I want, or I can go all the way up to about 18 feet for platform height. Now, usually I'm somewhere in a neighborhood of about 12 to 16 is about where I'm usually at for a platform height for my tree stand. But if the opportunity presents itself for me to be at 10 feet, or nine feet and I have good cover, I will pick that all day long. Why? Because then I can kill deer at three yards. The closer, the better. That's why you got into traditional bow hunting for the challenge and to be right there with these animals, to be in close. Bringing your tree stand any higher than you need to do is defeating the purpose. 
okay, because the shot angle doesn't allow for it. So you're going to have to check that tactics and that setup change out. I'm going to put these all three of those pictures I just showed you, I'm going to put them right now right here so you can actually see them. Uh, 15 yard, 12 yard, 8 yard. And when you look at them, look at the trajectory change on those arrows. So you can actually get a feel for what this is and see that difference. But it's something that you're going to have to consider here with your tree stand setup. So you're going to look for more cover to put your stands in so that you're not going to get busted up there because we have more movement now than we've had before with drawing and shooting a traditional bow. Yet you're going to be lower to get those angles right. That's also going to mean that you're lower and closer to the ground and uh, scent control is not to me even remotely relevant, but how you hunt the wind is going to be. Your wind direction and where you're putting that wind after it's hitting you is going to become vitally important. That's going to relate back to the how and why. You're going to have to analyze this situation and figure things out. This is all fun stuff. Don't let it freak you out. This is, this is the beauty of it. This is what hunting is meant to be. This is the way it's designed. But over the years, technology takes all of the fun stuff and all of the thought process and takes it away from you and makes it where you can just shoot further and you don't have to try as hard. You're in this for the right reasons. Take advantage of it and learn this stuff and enjoy it. Mental overload is another one. This is something you're going to have to deal with. And it's a good thing, but it is it is kind of crazy. But when it comes to hunting and your shooting. But when you become a traditional bow hunter and you realize that um, your days of uh, sitting on a field edge and shooting, you know, on the edge of a food plot and taking a shot at 35, 40 yards and a whitetail out there in the middle of the field, those days are gone. Now you're going to have that deer right here. He's going to be right there. You will be able to identify every hair on him. You will be able to see the whites of his eyes. You can see, you can hear him breathing. You can hear sounds that you've never heard before. He is right here. There's a lot of mental stimulus going on with that, and it's overwhelming. It's amazing uh, when it happens, and it will be a very powerful thing, but it can really shake you. Um, be prepared for that. Get excited about it, but understand that that's something you have to, you're going to have to deal with when it comes to that. When you actually get successful and you have these deer within range, it is going to do a whole bunch of different things to you chemically that's going to have your knees shaking and have you kind of freaking out and give you buck fever. And I don't care if it's a yearling doe. It's going to have that effect. And it also stems to the shooting aspect. Okay, when it comes to shooting, again, you may be great at targets, but when you have a real animal right there and everything is coming together and all that hard work and everything you've done is there, then you throw in the mix the fact that you have to do all the work, all in your head. You have to draw that bow. You have to aim at it. You have to come to full draw. You have to anchor. You got to have that back tension. You got to do all this stuff, and then you got to put that arrow where it's supposed to go. All of this stuff that just is pure overload. It's pure mental overload. It's a good thing, but follow these other rules here to help you contradict that mental overload so that you can take advantage of it and turn it into a good thing. But it will. It will definitely. It is something you are going to have to be prepared for. Because, I mean, I have watched grown men cry. I mean, six foot tall guys that work construction for a living and just built like a, a tank. And I've watched them break down and literally cry over shooting a yearling doe the first deer they killed with a traditional bow, but being beside that deer, jumping up and down and so excited, and then sit down next to that deer and literally cry. Tears running down their face. Why? Because the power of it. With a compound bow or, or a crossbow, everything is based on mechanical stuff. It's all designed for it. Your compound bow has sights, so all you have to do is focus on a sight. You look through the peep, you line up the pin, you set the pin on the yardage that you've already predetermined with your rangefinder, you click the trigger, it's gone. The bow has let off, so you don't have to do any work. It has a hard wall, so you always hit the same spot each time. There's all this stuff. Now, you're out there with a stick and a string, and it's all right here is what's got to put that arrow there. No sight pins, no anything, no, no advantages, no mechanical advantages, no cheating, no anything. It's just all you and that animal and your wits, and everything has to happen right there. You, again, with him right there, have to, I mean, if I had a nickel for every time, I, you know, as you draw that back, you hear your arrow come across that leather rest on there. You got an arrow rest on your bow. And it's mine, I use leather on mine, but that noise is that deer is right here. Now, it's not loud that it comes across there, but when you have a deer right here and you, and you start to do that draw, 
and you hear that, that sounds like the loudest thing in the world in your own mind. It's, it's amazing the things that you're going to run into out there and you're going to experience, but they are going to lead to a mental overload for you. So it is something you have to take into account. Same with the shooting, like I said. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I've, I have missed more P&Y deer than most people will see in their entire life. I straight up guarantee it. And uh, I mean, I'm talking, you know, every single state that I've hunted at. Reason for it, mental overload. When you got a 140 inch deer and he's standing there at seven yards, right there below you, it's, it's mental overload. So be prepared for that. Use it to your advantage. But it's one of the number one reasons that I don't care how far you can shoot, how good you are at certain distances, what you think you can or can't do. This mental overload will knock you on your rear end. It's straight up gonna, and it doesn't ever really go away. It just becomes more tolerable. We're glad it doesn't go away. It's one of the most powerful parts of traditional bow hunting. So we love it being here, but you're gonna need to be prepared for it. So in order to be prepared for that and to get in that tight range that we've been talking about, you are going to have to make your setups fine-tuned and micromanaged. Kind of like I was talking about shrinking your world, but we gotta take it a lot deeper. You're gonna have to find places where you can get deer inside of that 20 yards, okay? Or where the majority of them are gonna be inside of 20 yards. If you're coming from the compound or crossbow world, when you first get into this, you're gonna realize when you get out there in the woods, you're gonna be like, well, how am I gonna, there's 10 trails here, but I, if I'm stuck to 20 yards, I, I can only shoot two of these. Well, what, this is no good. This, this thing sucks. You know, that's gonna be your attitude. You have to fine tune that area micromanage it figure it out so you have to do the how and the why you have to start thinking about it start looking for something else that's going to channel that down tighter if you can't find it you're going to have to just accept now you have to figure out why those trails are and what's one's being used when and why so probably something you've never done before and now you're going to have to get down there on your hands and knees and look at those trails and identify which direction the tracks are going then you want to see which ones have the biggest tracks on them. Then you want to see if they're at which one's in the thickest cover so that you know which one's going to be used best during daylight. You have to analyze all these situations and you set up for that one. Why? Because it's all got to be fine-tuned. It's all on a much smaller level. You, your days of sitting in the middle and covering all 10 trails are gone. You don't have that luxury. We got 20 yards. 20 yards one way, 20 yards downwind if you're lucky and maybe get a shot before he gets there. Um, there's some techniques for that. Um, you'll see. But point being that you really got to, in order to do that, you gonna. I cannot emphasize enough that the way you think about hunting is going to change. Now there's some advantages to that. Just think. When you find areas, if you're setting up, if you're on private land and setting up an area, now you don't have to trim shooting lanes for 50 yards and a whole bunch of different smoke directions because you're going to shoot 20 yards anyway. So it's a lot quicker to set up and prep that stuff. So there's advantages to it all. And like I said, having those deer right there is that if a deer passes by you at 25 yards, it might as well be 50 yards. It's cool to watch and it's exciting, but your bow stays on the bow hanger. It's not even worth picking up yet. You're a traditional bow hunter now. Pay attention to that stuff. Um... You're going to have to practice multiple times a week. Your days of picking your bow up or your crossbow up a few weeks before the season and flinging a few arrows and making sure sights are on, those days are over. You want to carry a traditional bow in the woods, you've got to practice multiple times a week. May only be five or ten arrows a day, three days a week, whatever the case is. Or if you're like a lot of us, it's, it's, um, you know, it's almost every day. I'm only home for you know four days, four to five days a week during most of the spring, summer, and stuff like that in the fall. So I I, practice, I shoot almost every day that I'm home, uh, but I do got a couple days where I'm not here for work, so I, I don't get that luxury. But every chance I can, every day I can, I'm shooting. Most traditional bow hunters, especially the good ones, they are shooting every single day if they can. Now, if you live in a place where you don't have a range at your house and you can't do that and you have to go to a range to shoot or go to your hunting property to do it, you are still going to have to do this a couple times a week. Okay, you're not going to be able to do it one day every two weeks. It's not going to happen for you. I promise you. You will not get to the level that you need to be. It's a discipline. It's a it's an understanding. But again, you got into this for the right reasons. Your gear is going to have to be optimized for traditional hunting conditions. Am I talking about your bows? No, not at all. It has nothing to do with your bow and your arrow setup or anything like that. We are talking about your clothing. You need to have stuff that's quiet. 
Okay. Um, doesn't have to be the quiet. It doesn't have to be all fleece. You know, I don't, I barely wear much fleece anymore, but it has to be quiet enough to be able to work with these animals in close range. Okay. Um, and another thing on a side note too, for, you don't, you don't need camo. What I'm wearing today, I would hunt in this. Okay. Green cargo pants and a gray t-shirt. I would hunt in this all day long. Camel is the most overrated thing there is in the world. I promise you, you'll learn that. But um, but you need to focus on quiet gear. You, your tree stands, okay? Your old crickety ladder stand that you've been able to get away with hunting out of with your crossbow or with your compound, that's not going to fly anymore. You're going to have to yank that thing down, bring it home, put some new washers in it, oil it up, do whatever you got to do, tape some things. You're going to have to make it quiet. And I mean silent, quiet. Because if that deer is coming in and he's walking it and you're expecting him to come right through here and he breaks right here and he turns and he's about to start coming in behind you and you have to turn on that stand to make that shot, you need to be able to do that very quietly. If that stand creaks, pops, makes any metal sounds, it's over, straight up over, will not happen. So make sure all of your equipment is 100% optimized for the very close quarters that this is all gonna happen in, mandatory. It's those little details that are gonna be the difference between you getting a shot and just having a deer walk by at 12 yards, okay? Having a deer in at 12 yards is a huge accomplishment. It's a very good thing. I know compound guys, crossbow guys, they have it happen to them sometimes too. But when you have to have it happen, it's a whole different ballgame. It's like hunting squirrels. You got a million squirrels in your yard or right outside your office building and you watch them all day long out there. As soon as you put on an orange vest, grab a 22 and you head out the door, you can't find a squirrel. It's a lot harder. It's the same thing here. Having a deer 12 yards is one thing. Being able to kill a deer with a traditional bow and all of the movement and everything involved in it and all of the mental stuff that you have, that overload and everything you have to deal with in trying to make that happen, there's a mile of distance between that deer being dead and that deer being there 12 yards before all that happens. So just keep that in mind. So your gear, perfectly optimized. You have to be in it for the right reasons. If you picked up a traditional bow because you want more of a challenge, I'll accept that. If you picked up a bow because uh, you want to prove that you can do it, I don't accept that. It's it's okay, sort of, I guess, maybe, but you have to be in this for the right reasons. Those reasons should be to expand your hunting skills for the challenge, uh, to learn more about nature, to learn more about hunting. I promise you, best hunters in the world, the best, the, and, and I don't care who it is, if they became a traditional bow hunter, they would be that much better. Uh, in my opinion, best deer hunters in the world ever have been Gene and Barry Wenzel, two of the best whitetail hunters that have ever lived. Are there other fantastic ones? Yeah, look at like Dan Infault. Dan Infault's an absolute big buck slaying monster, and he's incredible, and I have a lot of respect for him. I uh, had him on my podcast. He's just one heck of a guy. He hunts with a compound. I'll bet if he spent two years in the woods with a traditional bow, he would become that much better. It forces you to be there. You're in it for the right reasons when you get here. You want to expand your knowledge. You want to expand your woodsmanship skills. You want to expand your hunting skills. You want to expand your adventure. You want to expand your energy and your excitement in the woods. You want all of this. Just basically every nerve in you becomes on high alert stimulus mode. It's a very powerful thing, but it has to be for the right reasons. If you're picking up a traditional bow because it's the cool thing to do, you're just gonna wound animals and you're not gonna give it what it's, it's due diligence, put in a time or effort, and or if you're just picking it up to try it for a little bit, I guess it's okay to give it a shot. Um, I, I guess I'm, I, I should say that, but your mind, your head needs to be in it for the right reasons. Otherwise, don't waste our time, don't waste your time. This is a group of people in a traditional bow hunting world that have very little tolerance for, for people that are doing things the wrong way or unethically or, or cheating the system. So just understand that. And while you're at it, understand that learning curve. Okay, you might have been somebody really cool with your traditional or with your compound or your crossbow, and you might be posting Facebooks with you with huge racks every single year. When you pick up a traditional bowl, there's a learning curve to it. I don't, uh, again, I said it in the beginning, all of the stuff that you know about hunting already from a modern world is not irrelevant because it will get you in the areas, but you got a huge learning curve ahead of you that's going to take you from 
this big of an area here to the one that you need right there and make it all happen in there. There's a big learning curve. It's going to take you some time to do it. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. It's also the reason that I say that any hunter that becomes a traditional bow hunter then becomes a better hunter than they've ever been before. Okay, it's because of that learning curve. It's because of always working in such close quarters with these animals and in that zone. It all matters. So be willing and understanding of that learning curve. If you expect yourself uh, to get out there right away and be killing animals all the time and this kind of thing, you're, you're fooling yourself. There, there is a learning curve that you have to accept. It will be the best teacher you've ever had in the woods, and it will be the best thing you've ever experienced before, and it will all be worth it. Even if you go a year or two or three without killing a set of horns or maybe not even killing a deer at all, it will be the best time you've spent in the woods, I promise you. Also, accept the eth ethics and the discipline of this, okay? Everything I just got done saying relates a lot to this. But if you go out there and you take a shot and you, you know, if you go out there and set up your GoPro camera in there and you get it going and you got a deer comes by you at 35 yards and you shoot him. And even if you make an ethical shot and you put it right through both lungs at 35 yards, post that, post that video on a forum, on a traditional bull hunting forum. Let's see how that pans out for you. Let's see, let's see the responses you get. You will be shunned, criticized, you will basically feel like you're that tall when it's done. Why? Because 35 yard shots with a traditional bow on a whitetail goes against all of the ethics that matter. Again, get in it for the right reason. The right reason is to be closer to animals. Taking a shot at 35 is a cheat. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So you have to accept the ethics and you also have to accept the discipline. You are the only one out there, the only one that you have to answer to is yourself in the mirror. But I promise you, you will not be happy with yourself if you try to cheat that or to cheat that learning curve, try to bypass this stuff, try to move it ahead. That's what's been done already. That's what brought you to the compound bowl. That's what brought you to the crossbow. That's what made that stuff so available. That's why so many people use them today. They don't have the discipline here to be able to deal with that learning curve or the ethics or whatever the reason is, but they want bigger, better, faster, and now, and they don't want to work for it. If that's you, you do not have the discipline to be a traditional bull hunter. Okay? So just keep that in mind, especially with whitetails. It's so much more complicated than you think it is. Um, to, to, I mean, there, there's such a huge difference in... Bow hunting whitetails with modern equipment and bow hunting whitetails with traditional equipment. I just can't say it any better. But if you're up for the challenge and you're excited about doing it and your heart is in the right reason, join along. We'll show you how to make this happen. I actually have a whole bow hunting whitetails course uh, that will teach you things uh, from a traditional aspect. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're still compound or crossbow because, again, what did I say? A traditional bow hunter is always going to be a better bow hunter. Not that I'm better hunter than you are, but... If I'm a traditional bow hunter, I'm better than I could be if I was a modern bow hunter. If you're a modern bow hunter and became a traditional bow hunter, you will become better than what you were before. It forces it. It's not an option. You don't have a choice. It just has to be that way. Um, but I have a course. I have a whole bow hunting whitetails course set up. The link's down below in the description. It'll show you. It can teach you a lot of stuff in there too if you're looking for more details. But this is why bow hunting whitetails with traditional equipment you know why traditional bow hunting whitetails is different the the limitations discipline ethics the uh, the mental aspect all of this stuff plays in and forces you to just put all these pieces of this pie together so if you're up for it dive in make it happen I ha ask any questions you have put them in the comments email me contact me i like i said i've been shooting a traditional bow for 25 years I've killed a ton of animals, and I will help you any way I can answer any questions. The rest of my YouTube channel has got a lot of this stuff on there, too. Hit the subscribe button. There's all kinds of videos that relate to this stuff on here. Tree stand setups, tactics, tips, techniques. You know, it's, it's all right there for you. So dive in, check it out, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.